Hey plant peeps, what's up? Uh, it's Dustin from Here But Not, the plant and orchid blog for people who wanna know how to grow and do stuff with orchids and keep them alive. Uh, today, I wanna talk about uh, sowing dry orchid seed. My last video, I talked or showed you a bunch of my flasks and and through that and, and sharing and talking about, about the breeding process, I've had some people ask specifically about how to dry sow orchid seeds because I, it's a method I prefer. You can also do green pod, which is where you take a, a green, like a, a, a non-ripe um, <clears throat> orchid pod, and you can cut it open and sterilize it, cut it open and sow the seeds. I, I don't like that method because when I'm working in a glove box, it's you cover it in bleach and, and all sorts of like sterilizing liquid, which makes the pods slippery. So today uh, I wanna do as quick as I can, but is as like thorough as I can of an example on how to do dry seed sowing. Uh, I had a Phalaenopsis Palins seed pod pop about 10 days ago, so it's been open for a bit, but uh, shouldn't prevent the problem. And if anything, I can at least show you the, the, the process that I go through on sterilizing the, the seed pod. Before I get into the details of that, I do wanna walk you through uh, kind of I didn't declare this in my last video, so I want to explain the process that, that we go through when when sowing orchid seeds. First, you start with a, a, a pod that has seeds in it, dry or green pod like this one. Then you flask them into a mother. In this case, there weren't a lot of, of seeds sown, but, but there were a few. In this case, there were so many that you can see them clustering together. And typically, you want to do a replate or, or a spread to prevent this many seeds sowing. But um, for me, because I'm I'm sowing in a house, I didn't really wanna, I, I, I'm trying to keep the replating process to a minimum so that uh, I have less contaminations essentially. But but replating from a mother is, it's a, you, you have to do it eventually because otherwise the seedlings get too big and they use up um, all the nutrients. And as you can see in this one, the seeds are getting, or the seedlings are getting very large and they're, they're, they're taking up all the space. So they need to be replated. Uh, this is an example of one that I had replated last week <clears throat> before I left. And uh, you can see that some of the seedlings have already like made a pretty large marked jump in size. So uh, understanding that there's a process of like starting here and then replating into new flasks every time where it has to be 100% sterile uh, you can kind of see how the process of breeding orchids is a, a little bit laborious. Um, but let's get on with uh, dry seed sowing because that's what we're all here to watch. All right, so we're in the kitchen and I thought about maybe like cleaning up a little bit more, but um, for the sake of the video and tutorial, I think it's important to like illustrate that when I do this, I'm not being like the surrounding area is kind of a mess. Um, the whole point of, of doing this dry seed for me is, is simplicity and, and ease of process. So uh, having a glove box, which is this thing here, is essentially a workspace that's enclosed where you're not having a bunch of airflow around and so you're able to, to make the inside of the area sterilized and sterilize the seed itself with the process we're about to do. And, and that means that the, the rest of the things going on, you can, you can be a human, you don't have to work in a lab in order to do this. Um, <clears throat> so some of the materials we need are the glove box, obviously, uh, you can find instructions on how to set up a glove box or make your own glove box on my website here, but uh, top right, there's navigation. There's a, an article about how to breed and, and do orchids. I'll also put that in the link below. Um, <clears throat> so the main things that we need are a syringe. The syringe is where we're going to be putting the seed along with hydrogen peroxide and as like a tiny, tiny quarter drop of dish soap and the dish soap works as a surfactant so that the hydrogen peroxide makes contact with the individual seeds. Otherwise the seeds can be hydrophobic and then you have problems getting complete coating of every single seed with hydrogen peroxide. And if a single bacteria or spore cell is on one of those seeds and it doesn't get killed, then it can infect the whole, the whole flask. Um, I've also pre-sterilized and made flasking media. 
I th that's an entire video on its own and I'm not going to get into that for this one, but just understand that these flasks have been sterilized in a pressure cooker at 121 degrees Celsius to kill any spores or bacteria that may have been in the media beforehand. And they've been sitting in my closet for about six weeks now. That's not a necessary process that the sitting in closet for six weeks isn't a necessary process, but what I do is I do batches of orchid um, flasking media so that I can deal with it later rather than trying to cook them up every single time because it takes quite a bit of time. Um, and then we have the seed itself, which I would recommend that as soon as the seed pod opens in the dry seed sowing like process that you use it immediately. Um, I had to go on a trip to Seattle and I didn't have time to do it before I left. So these have been sitting um, in the closet for probably about five, uh, 10 days now ish. So um, my hope is that we can sterilize the seeds and not get contaminations. Um, so I'm going to get started with, uh, washing my hands with bleach and, and soap, and then we'll get into the actual act of, of dry seed sowing. You want your hands to be as sterile as possible, but when I'm working with the seeds, I'm not going to be actually working with them in the glove box until the very end. So, so this is more or less a process of just checking the bases and making sure that I'm introducing as minimal amounts of, uh, contamination into this syringe as I'm doing it. So this is bleach water, it's 20%. Uh, I'm gonna spray my hands. And then I'm gonna, after I spray my hands, I'm gonna take dish soap that I had earlier, and I'm gonna get a small blob of that so that, again, I'm using the surfactant on my hands with the bleach to completely coat and get any grime, including up under the fingernails. Think about this as if you're like watching, you know, Grey's Anatomy or ER where they're like washing their hands before every surgery having their like shop talk. You really want to try and get absolutely every area of your hand covered so that the area and the, and the pieces that you're working with are as clean as possible. Um, this is more of a assisted preventative measure. This isn't really going to stop contaminations, especially if we don't get the actual sterilization process in the syringe done properly. Um, once I'm done washing, I just use paper towel. I'm pretty sure this is probably just reintroducing contaminations potentially. I recognize that. But again, the bulk of this purpose is to, to remove most of the bacteria and things that are in your hands. So um, the work that we do in, in this, this syringe is what's going to matter. We're going to get the hydrogen peroxide ready. The biggest thing about hydrogen peroxide is whenever you're doing this process, you need to use a new container. Uh, if you're using a, a, a container of hydrogen peroxide that's been open for a month or two, uh, as soon as it's exposed to air, it starts oxidizing and then it reduces the effectiveness. And so when you're sowing a new um, batch of seeds, you need to make sure that you're using a new bottle of hydrogen peroxide. These cost like two bucks, so it's really not that big of a deal, but it's just something to keep in mind um, when, when you're going through this process that, that you can't use like hydrogen peroxide you've had in your, in your cupboard for the last, you know, six months, because it's probably not going to be very effective at actually sterilizing the seed. Um, so I'm going to start by popping a hole in the top. I'm going to take this, fill a container with it. I'm going to add a very small amount of dish soap. Normally what I do is take a toothpick, try and get a bit on the top. I don't want a full drop. Get a bit on the top, mix it in. I probably wouldn't, I would try and avoid breathing over top of it. Right now I'm talking for the sake of the video, but I would be holding my breath typically. <laughs> um, just because I don't want any like bacteria from my mouth or breath getting in there. And then fill this back up. We now have hydrogen peroxide and soap ready to go. And we need to get the seeds into the syringe. So take the syringe, it's brand new, it's clean. The movement inside here or the the syringe inside was sterilized. It's not anymore. Um, I take it out, remove the needle because I don't need it. Um, then I pull the plunger out, all the way out, so that it's now ex exposed to air and essentially like not sterilized. And then I go in and I grab my seeds. Again, not sterile because this is all exposed to air. Remove the tag remove the actual seed pod. Typically with the seed pod, I would probably work with it a lot more to get the seeds out. But in this case, the seed pod is literally jammed with seeds. I don't know if you can see those in there, but there's a lot. So then what I'm gonna do is take the seeds and put them into, let's see if I get this here, 
put them into the syringe from the back end. There you go. Now that the seeds are in the syringe, I'm gonna take the plunger, put it into the back end, try and do it as slowly as possible so you don't wanna blow all the seeds out that have fallen to the bottom, which I frickin' did anyways. <sighs> anyways, inverted upside down, compressing out the rest of the air slowly so that you're essentially con concentrating all the remaining seeds at the tip, like this. You don't wanna crush them, so as you get close to the end, stop. Now we're gonna grab the hydrogen peroxide water that we previously set up with the soap. We're gonna go in, draw up probably about half the syringe worth of hydrogen peroxide. Now we can see that the seeds are actually concentrated in the tip. And this is where like bleaching your hands was important because you're gonna be touching it with your actual hands, not the other. And you wanna create a vacuum. So plug the tip and pull and that creates any air pockets that are inside there are gonna expand. So you wanna create the vacuum and shake. And what that's gonna do is any air pockets that are made attached to the actual seeds are going to expand and then, and then move away from the seed itself. So as you can see, the seeds have all dispersed evenly within there. So I'm gonna take it, now there was air pockets in there. I'm gonna remove the tip of my finger and push out the remaining air. Because you wanna have literally as minimal air in here as possible. You can see there's a little drop of water at the tip. Great, I'm gonna put my finger on the drop of water. Now I'm gonna make the plunger again and I'm gonna shake. And you wanna do this for 10 minutes. I'm gonna set the timer. <clears throat> you wanna do this process in totality with what we're gonna do for about 10 minutes. So that you can see the seeds are evenly distributed. What we're also gonna do now is take your hand, put it on the other end and push so that it cr creates pressure or compression within in the flask. That's gonna make any air pockets shrink if there still are any in there. And this repeated process of expanding and contraction essentially ensures that you're, you're getting that hydrogen peroxide in contact with the seed continuously throughout the sterilization process. Again, just gonna do this. So you don't have to agitate it continuously for the 10 minutes. Um, I would normally do it two or three times throughout. So what I'm gonna do now is set this aside and uh, line the inside of my glove box with paper towel, which I should have done before. All right, so the obje objective of this is to like keep the inside of your gl glove box sterile and let it sit um, and, sp and spray the inside. I should have done this before, but you know what? It's not perfect. We're working at home. That's what working at home is all about. So we're gonna line the inside of this with paper towel. The paper towel is not for sterility issues, it's more to make cleanup easier when we're done. Um, and it also holds bleach and all those things. So when you're working in the glove box, um, it's, it's easier to deal with those pieces. So this is 20% bleach water. Um, it's quite strong. The objective here is to literally sterilize the crap out of everything. These are the flasks. Um, I'm gonna put them all inside the, the glove box and then I am going to spray the absolute living crap out of everything inside there so that the inside of the box is sterile. Disinfected, I guess, not sterile. Sterile would involve a different process. I will warn you, working within a glove box can be a little bit frustrating because it's hard to see everything that you're working with. Plus, as the water starts getting sprayed, um, it makes it more difficult to kind of like, well, see what you're doing. When you're sterilizing the flasks that you're about to, to be working with, you really want to get under and around the lip, especially if those are the areas you've been touching a lot. The objective here is to like soak everything, including your gloves, absolutely soak everything and get up under that lip because if a single spore from anything touching these gets in, your whole flask is done. So, so I'm just gonna sterilize these things and make sure that my workspace and the inside of this box is um, effectively cleaned out. Yeah. Now this is where I, I find that the glove box is like not easy to work with. Sometimes you're trying to like get angles and things like that and it just does not work very well. And I think that uh, if you're new to flasking this is probably one of the most difficult things to overcome is kind of working with gloves 
in a space where you have like reduced visibility and where you're trying to maintain complete um, disinfectedness, sterility, whatever it's called. Um, <clears throat> so I'll put those aside. I've got about another four minutes for the timer um, on those seeds. So I'm gonna go back and continue uh, working with them and let these sit while we do that. You can see that the seeds are like well distributed in there. Um, the process of doing this has, will make the, the hydrogen peroxide bubble a little bit, plus you're shaking and creating a vacuum, which is making any tiny little air bubbles attached to the seed pockets or inside the seed pockets or, or like around the seed um, will make them expand. And, and that's really what you want to do because you want to get rid of all of these things. And what I just did there, you want to try and avoid, which is creating a vacuum and then pulling your finger off because it'll suck air in and potentially introduce new spores and things like that. At any rate, continue doing this um, probably two to three times during a 10 minute period. If you wait too long, like if, if the hydrogen peroxide is in contact with certain seeds for too long, especially Phragmopedium, um, possibly Papiopetalum, I have even found with fowls, if, if the contact is too long, then it can kill the embryo of the seed itself. So what you need to do is do this for about the 10 minute period, inoculate or, or put the seeds into the flasks and then put them under light for 24 hours. And that process of keeping them in, under light for 24 hours, they start uh, oxidizing in UV right away. So typically what I do is I'll run my lights overnight, but, but really you're only putting a small amount on the top of the surface and it should start interacting with the media itself as well as, well as light. Um, but you wanna try and have it neutralized to water as quick as possible. Um, because like I said, you don't want to kill the embryo with the actual hydrogen peroxide itself. Uh, it's kind of a fine line. And I think this is where some people get, um, str struggle with hydrogen peroxide is because they, they leave it on there for too long. Um, and, and what happens is it, it kills the embryo. Um, I've been, I've been messing around with times and found 10 minutes is fine. I started with 15 minutes and, and on a bunch of the Phragmopediums, it was too long and I lost, or I had a, a reduced viability of seeds. Um, so once I'm just about ready to get these seeds inside and, and actually put them into the glove box, what I'll do is I'll take the bowl of hydrogen peroxide water that I had set up and I will make sure that I've gotten rid of all of the leftover air pockets that may have come into the syringe. I'll get it down to zero and then I'll put this inverted into the hydrogen peroxide. And that's basically taking anywhere that my hands have touched on the hydrogen peroxide like tip, uh, sorry, on the, on the syringe tip uh, under hydrogen peroxide. And that way there's really no like risk of contamination getting inside the glove box when I put everything in because what I'm gonna do after that is spray everything down again and then take the syringe and, and just do like a really quick uh, jolt of seeds into each flask. Now for better sterility, I'm gonna take that, uh, um, I'm gonna take the bleach water and spray down the flasks again. And the timer has gone off. So I'm gonna do this fairly quickly because I don't wanna run out of time. And, and like I said, I wanna, I wanna keep the exposure time of the peroxide pretty tight on that 10 minute timeline. So what I'll do is I'll spray each flask with bleach and then I will open it, try and keep the, the open time very, as short as possible. So tilt, tilt it up because I don't want it, the seeds running down the side if, if at all possible. Open it up, hold the cap between my fingers, move this out of the way, grab the syringe. This is where it gets a bit difficult because it's slippery. Um, I'm gonna shake these up so that they're actually agitated inside there and properly distributed. And then one, two, and, and I can cap the lid. You don't need a lot of, you don't need a lot of seeds in here, right? Like each drop potentially has literally hundreds of little seeds. So I put it on, secure the lid tightly, and try and prop it up. This is not gonna work. I'm not propping this one up. Try and prop the other ones up if you can. Um, so I'll go on to the next one, same thing. Get the whole thing, lid off, working quickly, but trying to reduce the time of things being opened. 
grab the syringe, dab it off, shake, one, two, and we'll go to a bigger one. Typically I would only do two or three mothers, but I think it's good to have like a couple extra just in case. Um, oh, sorry. Just in case, uh, sterilize that. Just in case one of them does get like contaminated, I, I've gotten better and better success rate with this. I, this I'm not doing as good this time, so we will see how well that success rate is. But, um, but you don't need a bunch of mothers because at the end of the day, a single mother can potentially produce uh, enough flasks for, for for like literally hundreds of babies. So agitate. One, two, three, four, because it's a bigger flask. Put this on. Tighten it up. Set it aside. Uh, I wasn't going to do this last one, but whatever, I might as well. So, bleach water all around the top again. Just to make sure that we're getting anything that's in there. Lid comes off. Shake, 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 and one, two, three, four. And now the seeds are sowed. Um, next step is going to be to, to cap the lids and, and wrap some uh, cling wrapper on it because it helps reduce the airflow around the point of where you're going to get the most infection, which is near the lid. So um, let me just mess with my gloves and get out of the... When you're taking them out, try not to touch the, uh, don't touch the, the top, right? Like you want to try and keep that threaded area around the seeds or around the flask uh, as sterile as possible. This is very hard to do, by the way, to talk and, and like think about the steps that you, that you don't maybe do all the time. So thanks for kind of sticking with me on this. Sorry, it's a little bit bumpy. So these still have bleach on them because I was bleaching them inside the container. This is a, like a cut roll of saran wrap. It's got like a, it's like an adhesive type. Uh, I'm going to take this, attach the saran, or yes, attach the saran wrap to the lid without trying to touch any of it, wrap it around so that my fingers are not making contact with any of that section. And then I'm going to pull it tight. And typically I also have to wrap an elastic band around this. And then once I'm done, pull it off, set it aside and go to the next one. Make sure that you like after every, every single like individual seed type that you do, make sure that you ID them right away. Um, it's super easy to get these confused. And if you have like a bunch of seed pods or, or projects on the go, it's really, really easy to lose track of which is which. And, and if you're investing three years, you know, in, in like, growing these things up to blooming size and you get the ID wrong, uh, you're going to be so not happy about that. As, as well as potentially your customers if you're selling them the wrong thing. And it happens a lot. And you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if, if some of that happens when people are pollinating because if you use the same toothpick on two different plants, you're potentially contaminating at least some, some of the seeds because the, the toothpick that you use maybe on a different set of pollen will, can, and will transfer some of that genetic material or or pollen to the new, to the new seed, uh, to the new ovary. So, so make sure when you're like doing this, the breeding stuff that you're being diligent about labeling and, and being diligent about process, even if that's not what it looks like I'm doing here, because I'm pretty like sloppy doing this in my house. Anyways, so, so what I'm going to do next, Ooh, that scared me. What I'm going to do next, now that this, they've all got the plastic wrap on there, I'm going to take a I'm going to ID them, so Phalaenopsis palins. Uh, I'll stick a sticker on there with the date that I had, had done them and I will set them aside uh, under the lights for the next 48 hours so that the, the light can get rid of that hydrogen peroxide. I use pencil because pencil doesn't oxidize the same way that pens and Sharpies can. Uh, so if you're going to be doing this over a long period of time, it's pencil's a little bit better. Also make sure that you include the year because uh, you know, some of these things are going to be in flask for potentially up to two, maybe three years if you have bad luck, but, but definitely at least two years. So, so keeping track of the, the year is important as well. 
Just closing this out before I put them under the lights. You, you can see there's quite a bit of seed under there. I'm probably gonna have to replate these for sure, assuming I don't get any contaminations. Uh, typically, I probably wouldn't have done so many, but uh, I guess the selfing produced a lot of seeds. So, so we'll see how this goes over the next couple of weeks and if they green up and uh, you know, if, if they do well, then I'll probably take these and, and re-spread re them into new flasks just because there's like really too many of them in here. Got them all kind of jumbled in on, on, in, there, ah, in there under the light. Uh, you can see that like that's the one that was contaminated from my other one. It's doing fine. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on these and see how they, they go. And if I get some contamination as well, oh well, I'll keep you apprised. It, it happens and uh, life goes on. So thanks for taking along. Uh, I hope that that was informative. I will hopefully not have to make any edits because the project is done at this point. Uh, that's kind of how I do it. And it's I've had a lot better success with dry seed sowing because when you're doing green pod, everything just is moving around constantly inside the container. And if you like drop the pod once, it kind of screwed, right? Like if you, if you drop a pod and it gets infected, then you don't have a way of rolling back from that. I still have seeds left over from, from what we just did. So to me, dry seed has a lot, of, lot more like benefits, which is simplicity, ability to, to repeat if you screw up. Um, and, and the only downside is really that it takes a little longer to wait for the seed pod to mature. It's about six months versus three months on a green pod. Um, so leave me some questions. Let me know how it goes. Probably not one of my more like engaging type videos and, and it was a little bit choppy, but that's what I got to work with. So thanks for tagging along and subscribe if you want to, you know, keep up to date on, on the future of these uh, foul palins and, and any of the other orchid updates I do. I'll also be doing some more videos on, on replating and stuff like that in the future as well. So thanks again. Have a great day. And oh, I almost forgot. I get it. Ah. <sighs>